Hey all. Um, in this video, we're going to take care of setting up our workbook. Um, generally, we call these sheets, but just one sheet is a sheet. Multiple of these together are a workbook. So we're going to set up the template for the workbook. Well, I'm going to run through with this uh, dummy data. It's not real. I didn't take the data, but it's the data that I'm going to use. Um, it's as good as real data as far as we're concerned. This is the data that I'm going to use uh, to run through the lab and or run through the data analysis rather. And then uh, you all know where to go and you'll know how to set up your template. So I know you've got the first two sheets squared away and you already know how to do this sheet. So it's okay that I don't have values written in because you know what it should look like. And you know that in the end you produce five data points with error bars on both. So we have IO data points, um, I for image, O for object. So we have um, pairs of IOs and they both have errors. Now the relationship between I and O is not linear. The relationship between I and O with respect to focal length um, is not linear, but um, we know that we can massage the touch and we find a way to construct a linear formula uh, with it. And we found that formula to be that if we set y to i plus o and x to i times o, then y will equal the power times x, or um, y will equal x divided by focal length. But we know what power is. We'll reference the power when we check our answer. So we're going to be solving for power as a slope. So we're here, and we want um, our next step is going to be constructing our x and y data points with errors on them. But we're going to do that with some Monte Carlo simulations. So I have sort of a setup first of just this will be just for distance one, we'll find y and its standard deviation or its uncertainty. And then we're going to do this five more times over here, oops, over here. Um, and we'll have all five distances and we'll have our y's and we'll have the errors. Notice down here, I don't have a sheet for the X Monte Carlo simulation. It's not because we don't need it. It's because I wanted to show you this little trick. And the trick is, if we right click a sheet, um, we can duplicate it. So that'll make a copy. Its name will be copy of and what it's, what's been duplicated. So this copy, I'm going to let, I'm going to turn it into the X sheet. So we know that Y is I plus O, but that's not what's here. We want X equals I O. That's I times O. And then right here, we can have X. So this is our X version. We can name it that. So we'll rename to X MC simulations. So, um, Let's dig in. <laughs> anyway, um, so so we that's how you duplicate. If you want to just add a sheet and go from there, remember it's this plus down here, add sheet. But let's get kicking on this first y data point. So we're gonna need the mean standard deviation of i and o, um, and we'll do the norm inverse so we can pull from the normal distribution defined by those, and then we can just go on adding them together. I have a thousand trials here. Actually, if I grab the scroll bar, it's easier. Um, and we'll run it through a thousand times. We'll take the average standard and standard deviation, and we'll get the average and standard deviation on y. We'll be constructing this with i and o, so let's grab them. Um, and we're not, or I should say what we will do is that we will be referencing them. And to reference is exactly to go by the equal sign and then click the cell. So here it is. We have it. So it's the raw data sheet. Um, let's click it. Okay. So it's the raw data sheet and it's cell L4. Cool. Um, what's nice, we don't, we can't drag through them in an easy way, but at least we can get the standard deviation by dragging over. So we can pull this one, one to the right. And then we get our, the right standard deviation. Let's go over and grab O. 
So we'll do equals, and now we want our first object, and that's going to be this cell right here. We're re <clears throat> we are referencing the cells. Um, so that the whole time, our, all that our whole sheet will depend on will be what's in our raw data table. So now we have I and O. We want to set these up to be I plus O equals I plus O. But we're pulling them, this is a Monte Carlo, so we're pulling them from the random distribution. So we need norm inverse. Um, now remember this takes, the first argument is where in the distribution we're grabbing from. The second argument is the mean and the third argument is the standard deviation. So we want a random um, sample from the standard deviation, or from this standard, sorry. We want a random uh, value from the normal distribution. We want to have cell here for Good. Okay, so this is our random choice from the standard, from the normal distribution defined defined by B two C two, and we want to add it to some norm. Sorry, we want to add it to some randomly chosen value from the other normal distribution from the normal distribution defined by O. So. And there we have it. So we'd love to drag this down all the way through, but we can't. Um, and that's because it increments our cell every time. Remember, we're referencing cells. So let's talk about something really cool. And it's called the fixed reference. We've talked about it before just as the dollar sign, but let's get let's talk about it by its real name. It's called the fixed reference. So if we put a dollar sign here, then um, whatever we put the dollar sign in front of exactly say we have b2 c2 if i put a dollar sign here b won't change and neither will two but if i don't put it on b and just on two only the row will stay the same this is going to be cool because we want to be able to drag this whole thing over to the right so we do want to be able to copy and paste and have it ship but we don't want <clears throat> we don't want that to happen when we increment down so we're fixing the number, but we're not fixing the letter. Okay, and we'll do that on the other one too. So we're fixing the rows that these are in, but when we drag to the right, and we have new, um, we have the distance twos, I, I and O values, we'll be able to just drag over. So anyway, let's get this down through our 1000 trials. Almost there. Great. Um, check this out. We're at the bottom. We're at cell one o or one thousand and six. So that now, when we do our average, our mean of i plus o will be equals average. And now we highlight the whole value. This is huge. I don't want. This is how I like to do. This particular task of dragging through instead of dragging all the way I just start at the top and I know what the last cell is so I type it in I know that it's going to be b7 to b1006 so that's what I type in and there's our average and now my standard deviation oops don't forget the equal sign I'm going to do the same thing dot s and I'll just start the drag but not finish it. And then type in the last cell myself. Instead of dragging all the way through, you can do it either way. I find this to be faster. So that's what I do. Awesome. So we have our first Y data point and we have our first Y error bar. Um, nope. Now what we want to do is we want we're going to have five copies of this. So if we 
highlight the rows, or sorry, highlight the columns, we copy them. Let's jump over two to keep some space. So now when we paste this, we'll get this whole thing again. And now we want to remake this into distance too. Some things in here incremented. We don't need, I know this is not correct. Um, they copied over, we need to fix them along with this being the average of the column and this being the standard deviation of the column, those will stay and that's nice. So we want to keep these the same. Once we have our values correct in here, our mean and standard deviation will just pop up. So we need to copy I and O again. And then um, these will already be referencing those cells. So then the whole thing should fall out. Let's see if, let's see if it does. Let's get our second I. Oops, sorry, we're not copying. I keep going to do it accidentally because I'm used to it. But referencing is much more is is preferred. So there's our image. Click enter. And now we want the object. We can have equals second object distance. Click enter. Because their standard deviations are to their right. If we pull them to the right, their standard deviation comes with them. Awesome. Hey, and our whole column updated, and we have our second Y. Freaking awesome. That's great. All right, uh, let's make sure we have this correctly labeled. This is for number two, our second distance. And now what we can do is we can make three more sets like this. All we got to do is get I and O in and then we'll be there. We'll have all of our Y data points. So let's paste three more times. Great, we got all our data in. We're gonna have to fix these labels still. Um, but then we have all of our Y's all set. Oops, not three again. All right, now you're using Monte Carlo. We've got our Y values and our Y error bars. <clears throat> now we can go ahead and we'll do this for um, the next com the next sheet but some things some things we can copy over we don't oops, we don't really need, want the whole sheet because all of these formulas are not the formulas that we're going to be using uh, to find X but this whole top piece of distance one two and three four and five in these I's and O's none of this is going to change we still need I and O from each distance. So let's copy this. So we've got it copied. Um, where do we start? This is in the top left. So we'll paste it up here in the top left. Awesome. And now we got all our I's and O's as we should. And all we need to do is set up the formula for all these and put in these ones. So um, first, let's get the first trial in. We want the same norm inverse oops but we still need an equal sign <laughs> norm inverse and we still want it to be random and now we want this cell comma this cell and now we're multiplying them we're not adding them i don't think we need it but i'll put a little star for multiplication And now these values, great. We got to do the same thing as before. We got to fix the references, the rows of them, not the letters, because we want them to switch for each of these. So, but every time we got to be looking at row, um, rows two and three, because that's where our I's and O's are. They don't increment. 
wicked. We drag this down all the way through. Awesome. Down to cell 106 again, or row 106. So our average, ah, crap, sorry, the equal sign every time. Average, and let's start, and we know that we're gonna go to 1007. Oops, 1006. Now I want the standard deviation. We're still using the standard deviation of a sample too. That's what we always use because we never have all of the data. Awesome. Great, so we got our first one set up. Um, and now, uh, because of the way that these are referenced, um, if we copy these of the column over, these letters will change and they'll be respected to these. So if we now copy these three, this is fun because now we do, we don't have to change anything after we paste. All we got to do is one long highlight. All right, and I want all three of these columns. So I'll right click, copy. Let's go back to the top. And right here, I'll paste. And these I'll increment over, and they give me new values because now we're looking at G and H. We're not looking at, oops. We're not looking at B and C as we were before. Uh, so this is wicked, and we can do this for each one. Just control V for paste. And now we have all of our X data points um, with error bars, and we also have the Ys. So we're looking pretty good. So <clears throat> onto the next sheet in our workbook. We're going to set up our Xs and Ys so that then we can have our um, least squares fit weighted by the y errors and then we can have our inverted least squares fit weighted by the x errors which will then be the y errors and then we can go on to our final monte carlo simulation of calculating the gmr fit that'll be our final slope so now we want to put all our X's in here in their sigmas, all our Y's in here in their sigmas. So starting with X, go to our XMC. Oops. We're going to do the same reference thing, right? Where we always want to do this reference thing. If we ever, we could copy this whole workbook. We could delete the raw data sheet. And then if we fill in the raw data, everything else will pop out. That's the point. We're pretty much making a computer um, or something like it. So equals, let's go to our X's and it'll be our first. Our standard deviations are to the right, so we can drag to the right to get our sigmas. All right, let's get this. We'll get all our X's in, all our Y's in with their sigmas. Awesome, all our data is in here. Let's space out a little bit. Oops. Great. 
Great, so there's all our data. That's what all of our Monte Carlo, sim Monte Carlo simulations were for. They were for turning this raw data, these two columns and these two columns, was for turning those raw data into X and Y data that has a linear relationship, right? Um, all it took was 10 Monte Carlo simulations. So let's get um, our data in here. So we want our weighted X. So our first weighted X point will equal the first X point weighted by sigma Y, because we're weighting all these by sigma Y. And we can drag it down because everything just goes down by one. Easy. Now our weighted y will equal our first y, or our first weighted y will equal our first y times our first error. Enter. We can drag them down. Awesome. So now we're going to use Linest and we're going to find out what the slope of this weighted data is. Um, so let's get Linus oh, with an equal sign. Let's get Linus. Now remember, the arguments Linus takes are the y data first, then it takes the x data. And then it's a true or false question on if we're setting the intercept to zero. For this one, we will be setting the intercept to zero. So we'll be saying false, which I know is kind of confusing. Um, but we're saying false because we're not going to look for an intercept. We know the intercept has to be zero. It asks us if we want to set, if we want to look for the intercept. So we're saying false. We want it to be set to zero but we want it to give us all of the errors. So the last one we'll set to true. The last one is if it spits out all these fun guys. Um, so this is the slope that we get and our intercept is zero, which is nice um, as it should be. And of course we don't have an error on it, but then we have our slope error. Now, we're going to set up the inverted weighted um, and then we can do linest again. And once we have the two slopes and their uncertainties, we can go to the final Monte Carlo for calculating GFMR. So our weighted Y's go to X. So we're going to take um, our Y data and we're going to weight it by the X. Um, error. And now we're going to take the x data, oops, <laughs> equals our x data, and this will be times the error in our x data. All right, so now we can do our linest with these. We can do equals linest. Um, and we take our y data first. Now this was our x data, but our x went to y. So y, x, and now we want oops, false. We don't want to look for an intercept and we want true. We do want it to spit out the extra info that contains our errors. Awesome. So this is the slope we get. Remember this is the inverted slope. Let's just do a check. Let's have equals one divided by this one. Let's see how close they are. Now they shouldn't be the same, but they should be kind of close and they're pretty close. So that's working. <clears throat> now that we have, um, you know what, let me add a Right click, insert one, doesn't matter. Um, this is going to be slope and uncertainty. So that's talking about these two 
and these two. We'll do M1, and we can call this one M2. Great. So now we're going to get M1 and M2 together to do the GMR. So we're going to copy those right into here. Or we'll not copy, right? We're going to reference them. So let's get our weighted slope is our weighted slope. Um, we can't do dragging now because the error isn't to the right, so we're going to have to copy each one. Equals this one. So there's our error. Now the inverted slope is this one. And the error on it is this one. Now, we have talked about GMR fits before. So I know that you all have seen this, but let's just talk about it. So um, the GMR slope is the square root of the weighted slope times the slope you get from the inverted weighted slope. That would mean that you would want to invert it again and then multiply them. Instead of inverting again, we can multiply, uh, we can have the inverted slope divided by the, in sorry, Ooh. we can have the weighted slope divided by the inverted weighted slope because it's the same thing as if we inverted this and multiplied them together. We gotta take the square root out at the front because it's a geometric mean. So we're gonna have equals, and the last thing we'll do is a square root. So we'll have a square root of, we wanna take um, values from normal distributions divided by these. So we'll do norm inverse, and we still want random values. with our mean as this guy and our standard deviation is this one. Um, oops, let's just do it now. We already know that we're gonna have to fix these references. Um, we could even fix both, it doesn't matter. We're not gonna be moving this one to the right now because we only have one simulation left. But we do need to make sure the rows don't change because we're looking at this row. As for the next one, we're not looking at this row. So we wanna divide by now um, a random choice from this distribution. So we'll do norm inverse again. And let's define the distribution. And let's put our fixed references. Oops, that's C2. We don't want C2 here. That should be C3. And we want to fix them in place. Great, so we're taking the square root of weighted slope divided by inverted weighted slope. Oops, I need a rand here. All right, now that's what we're doing. So if I bang on enter, nice. That's a pretty fine looking slope. Um, notice that we're taking a square root in the end. That means that what we're gonna come out with is a positive value, okay? we're going to lose any information that has to do with our sign when we are basically squaring and then taking the square root. Um, pretty obviously, or at least, um, we know that the power will be, or we know that this, the slope from our two weighted slopes. We know that these slopes came out negative. If we invert this one, we're still going to get a negative number. So our GMR slope will be negative. But what we pull out from doing this Monte Carlo simulation with the formula for GMR is a positive number. That's okay. As long as you know why it's there. So let's have equals average. And we're going to take the average of this whole column. We're starting at seven this time, yeah, so we're gonna go up to 106 again, or 1006. You might think that it'd be 1007, but since we're including the first cell and the last cell, um, 
it's like you subtract and then add one. So there's our average, and then now we want equal standard deviation of a sample, and it's the same group. Awesome. Now let's get a little more space here. Awesome. And in the end, after all of our 11 Monte Carlo simulations with our um, 10 data points, or sorry, with our five data points with errors, we come out with a slope and a standard deviation on that slope. And remember that our slope uh, from our formula equals our power. So it's a big spread, it's a big um, workbook with six sheets. Um, it's a lot, but when you get to the end, you've made a computer. The input is this raw data, and the output is um, the power, the power of the lens, if this data is correctly image distance and object distance. For any experiment where you have these two um, that obeys the same formula that we're using, you put your numbers in, everything will update because we're using references, and your power will pop right out. So this is a powerful workbook that you are putting together, albeit um, a big job, OK? Um, but this is combining what we know from linearization. This is uh, with what we know from Monte Carlo. And we come out with something pretty powerful. Anyway, that concludes this video.